channel and to the wedding series. So Kyle and I had our engagement photos taken this last weekend and it was just the best experience. But I put a ton of thought and effort into my makeup and my hair and my clothing and like what I'm gonna like 10 years from now. So I want to share that with you guys. So in my wedding series before, I've kind of unofficially started it. I did the bridal tutorial, the bridesmaid tutorial, and then showed you guys us looking at venues. So I wanted to take you guys through preparations of what it takes to do a perfect engagement shoot. Let's talk about the night before, actually the week before. Make sure you get your hair highlighted, your eyebrows waxed, all those things that you do. Then let's talk about tanners. So you can go to the Suntan City and get in some kind of booth and like let it spray your whole body the same color or you can do the smarter thing. <laughs> so I really love this self tanner because of the base. It gives me a nice color, but also I can control the amount that I put places. What you really wanna watch out, especially for your engagement shoot, you don't wanna get a lot of self tanner on your face because when you put a lot of self tanner on your face, like sometimes it's fine, but engagement pictures, you're taking pictures up close, and if you get a lot of tanner on your face, it's gonna look muddy and oily. So really make sure you go lighter on the face. I recommend Loving Tan, I have a discount code. I'll link it at the bottom. Then, Okay, so day of, you wanna get those under eye bags gone. So my favorite under eye bags are these 911 pack your bags tart eye patches. I'm gonna show them to you. They're just these little jelly eye patches and I use them like four times. I put them like back in my refrigerator. So I put these under my eyes before I start my engagement shoot. I'm talking like I've done all these engagement shoots. I, FYI, I've only done one engagement shoot, but it went real well, so I'm teaching you guys how to do one. Okay, so put those under your eyes for like 20 minutes, take them off, and begin this process. So, you want to moisturize your face. I'm using my By Terry um, Hydrants Daily Care. And then I'm gonna mix for my engagement shoot. I'm gonna mix two different primers because I want luminosity, but I also want like coverage of my pores and my wrinkles and such. So I'm, I'm mixing the Porefessional by Benefit and the Tom Ford um, Illuminating Primer. Mixing those together and prime my face. Be sure to prime your face. You wanna know why? Because you're gonna be smiling for like four hours. You're gonna crease, you're gonna have lines. So it's very important to prime your face, especially if you don't have a photographer that's real good with that Photoshop and that's gonna help you out. Okay, I really love, for my engagement pictures, I wore this Estee Lauder Double Wear because you really need, in my opinion, a matte, very full coverage foundation. So I'm gonna put on a full layer of my Estee Lauder Double Wear. I wear the shade Ivory Beige. Now you can go with something a little bit lighter if you want to, but I think on your wedding day and on your engagement picture day, you really need to have full coverage, especially because you're gonna be taking pictures for a long time, and a lot of those lighter coverage foundations are gonna wear off. Another tip for engagement shoots, you're gonna be like facing towards your partner and doing a lot of kisses and such. Be sure to take this foundation down the neck. I'm gonna say all the way down the neck, like to the collarbone, just to be sure that you have a seamless coverage, even like you can blot it, like just be sure to bring it down like that. Next, I'm gonna go in with this Tarte Shape Tape. You really wanna have that under eye really light and bright and start a contour. However, if I can make a suggestion for your engagement makeup, don't go with the trends. So yes, contouring is big. Yes, winged eyeliner is big, all that stuff. I did not chase a single trend. I did my makeup classic because in 10 years, I wanna be able to look back at these pictures and be like, oh, how sweet we were in love, not like, why wear a winged eyeliner like that? <laughs> this Tarte Shape Tape, I'm gonna put her. I'll blend this with the Tarte Shape Sponge. You can use a beauty blender. I really love for things important like pictures, really press that in there. Don't wipe, press. So that was the shade light medium that I blended in and then I just took a little tiny bit of the shade light and put it right underneath my eyes. And I'll blend that. Okay, I'm then gonna set my under eyes. I'm using the Laura Mercier Eye Brightener. And I'm just gonna set right under my eyes where I put that shape tape. You can also set those other light spots just real quickly. And then, I'm actually gonna do my translucent powder now because I really want my bronzer, my blush, my highlighter to pop. So I'm going in with the Laura Mercier translucent powder, just one quick layer. Because you're gonna wear a matte foundation, you don't really need a lot of this, but it's good to have some. Rats, I had started doing the bronzer segment of the video and then my camera went off. 
So, restarting. Now remember, we're not going to chase trends doing this look. So instead of doing a contour line, I'm going to do a different bronzer technique. And I actually learned this from Jess Southern when I did that video with her. I was watching her. She does a totally different bronzing technique because she doesn't like the way that a contour harsh line looks. So I'm using the Kevin Aquan bronzer. You can use any bronzer. And then the Sigma Angled Soft Angled Contour Brush. And what I'm going to do, I've already done this side, but instead of doing that harsh line, you see how I'm doing upward circular motions. And it makes it a much softer bronzing technique. See, typically, you guys have seen me and I'll go like this. It ain't like that today. And then I'm also gonna go in with a smaller brush. I'm gonna pinch it like this, barely do any, and then I'm gonna just lightly to the bridge of my nose like that, just to kind of make my nose look a little bit more streamlined, which it is not. Okay, and then I'm just gonna take this brush with nothing on it and soften that out even more. Now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do my blush. So I just got this new Charlotte Tilbury blush in the mail. This is the Cheek to Chic Swish and Pop Blusher in Love Glow. So I'm gonna mix this one with the color that I usually use, the Climax. So one of them's a darker blush and then one of them's a more pinky blush. I like to mix these two shades. And go right on the cheek. Now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do my highlighter. I'm gonna go in with my, my tried and true Becca. Now, you could skip the highlighter if, if you're kinda like, ugh. But I do for pictures like a little bit of a glow. So I'm just barely gonna put it above my lip. I'm very lightly using this brush. Just barely down the tip of my nose and just a tiny, tiny bit on the top of my cheeks. That's all. Don't use anything with like glitter flecks in it or anything because that's really gonna show up in a picture. All right, let's move on to the eyes. Okay, I'm gonna prime my eyes with my typical MAC pot, Paint Pot Painterly in Soft Ochre. Wait, Soft Paint Pot in Soft Ochre. Painterly is another color. <laughs> Got so many things going on in my mind right now. Now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do my shadow. I'm gonna do my brow last on this look. I'm gonna go in and be sure to go with your typical tried and true eye colors. Use colors like beiges and like light tans like in my opinion i'm not trying to go in there with like a crazy pop of some color that i'm loving now. this is um these are all anastasia beverly hills and this color right here it's just kind of a um a nude color i'm gonna cover my whole lid with this this color is blanc um this is a matte color okay then i'm gonna that's any kind of like flat head brush I'm then going to go in with my MAC 224 brush, and I'm going to mix the shades Dusty Rose and Fawn. Do you see those colors? Very neutral transition shades. And I'm really, really going to blend out this crease. Like, for a minute. I want that eye to be, like, really blown out. So make sure you blend it all the way, like, up here, almost to your brow, and then all the way out to the end. This is a technique that is not gonna go away because this is called blending. And in 10 years, if people ain't blending, I don't even wanna be alive. Just kidding. And then last but not least, I'm gonna go in with a smaller brush. This is the MAC 221 brush. And I'm gonna go in with a darker crease color. So you can use like a darker brown like this. Here is where you could use a little bit of a, a like purplish shade. I'm going to go in with this. Um, this is Rich Velvet by Anastasia Beverly Hills, and it's got a tiny bit of fleck in it, like a little bit of metallic, but you can't see it. So, and I'm just putting that in my crease. Okay, now here's where I will go in with a little pop of metallic. I'm going to go in with this color right here. It's kind of like a mix between a gold and like a rose gold. I'm just going to take my finger and I'm going to put it right there on the inner eyelid like that. That's really going to make your eyes pop and sparkle and that's something that you really want during your engagement shoot. That color is called Gleam by Anastasia Beverly Hills. Because liquid eyeliner or gel eyeliner it's kind of tough to do that even like all the time so i say go the safe route and this really is going to blow and smoke your eyes out and it's going to look like really clean and just like you have these beautiful big doughy eyes 
I'm gonna actually use a powder to line my eyes. So you take a small brush, this is an old Chantikai brush, but you barely touch that into that black. And also, if you're gonna use a black powder, you should do your eyes first and then do your face, but I did my face first. So then I'm just gonna rub this into my lash line, like so. All the way into that inner corner. Don't do, in my opinion, don't do a wing. Don't like smoke it out. I think you've got to go really safe and then I'm just going to bring it right there on the lower lash line as well. Okay, and that color was Anastasia Beverly Hills Noir. I think that's how you say it. Okay, I'm gonna go in now. This is a very important part of any bridal makeup, of any engagement shoot, anything where you want your eyes to look really bright and alive. So this is the MAC Eye Cold Fascinating Eye Pencil and it's in white, and you're gonna line your waterline with that. Okay, and it takes all that pink out and it makes you like not look tired. Okay, and then now you're gonna, gonna go in and I so 100,000% recommend a lash for an engagement shoot. I recommend a lash extension. This is a special occasion. If you don't have a lash extension, you know my go-to lash are always the Demi Wispies by Kiss. It's a drugstore brand. It's really inexpensive. I would recommend getting a pair and like trying them out before. Get them real good at putting those babies on. I'm gonna go in with my mascara now. I'm actually using a Clinique mascara. Um, this is the High Impact Extreme Volume Mascara and I used to use this a long time ago and I've kind of pulled it back out. So you want to really coat those lashes. Go ahead and coat your bottom lashes as well. If you're somebody that's like real emotional, if you're gonna cry through your engagement, shoot, wear waterproof mascara. <laughs> okay, and last but not least, because I really want my brow to pop, I'm doing that last, and I'm gonna go on with my Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz in taupe. I'm gonna do my eyebrows really quickly, and then I'll be right back. But what I do is I outline the whole brow, and then I fill them in, and then I actually add a powder over top. Okay, so as you can see, I've filled the brow in. So I outlined it, filled it in, and then now I'm gonna go in with this MAC. It's just a matte brown eyeshadow. This one's Omega. And then I just use an angled brush and I just fill it in because you don't want any holes in the brow. All right. And now for the lips. I went with just a very typical, a color that I always go back to time and time, and time again. This is Pink Mauve by Bobbi Brown. You guys have seen me wear this a thousand times. And then I'm just gonna wear a nude, like sparkly gloss over top of it. This is Bar Sparkle by Bobbi Brown. I'm gonna cover my whole lip with this and then I'm just gonna put the gloss on. It's like a nice mauve pink, very neutral color. Okay, and then I'm gonna put my gloss on. Okay, something else that I'm gonna do too. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna set my makeup because you want your makeup looking really fresh for a few hours, depending on how long your shoot is. I like this Urban Decay D Slick makeup spray. It's oil free. I just spray that all over my face. You let it dry before you like crease your face or smile or anything. So the makeup is done. You definitely want to make sure that you bring your translucent powder in case you get a little bit shiny. You can maybe bring like your blush and bronzer in case like you keep putting translucent powder on and you need that pop again. Definitely bring your lipstick. That's the most important thing. Okay, let's talk hair a little bit. I'm not going to do a tutorial on how I did my hair because my hair was pretty simple. What you really want to make sure of, and this is something I'm so bad about and it like sounds so crazy, but make sure that the back of your hair looks perfect because in engagement shots you're taking a lot of pictures where you see the back of your head where you're like hugging and kissing and like doing all those lovey things and you see the back of your head and like you don't want to see like real hair and weave because that distracts from the beauty of the love in my opinion i really love like a classic look i don't like you know a top knot or like all those trendy things same thing goes with the hair like don't do your makeup really trendy don't do your hair really trendy either now before I talk about what I wore and what, in my opinion, I think is great for all engagement shoots, let's just talk a little bit about the photographer. So I know a lot of people watching this from a small town. I was from a small town where you have like one photographer. Or a lot of you might be from some big city where you have to like literally Google search and be like engagement photographers. So a lot of times the person that you hire to do your wedding, who you've researched and stuff like that, will do your engagement shots. Mine are in LA, so I kind of had to search around Nashville. I ended up going with somebody that I know, Chloe, that shoots me all the time. I do a lot of photo shoots, but I wanted to go somebody with somebody that we were comfortable with, and we also wanted a really specific feel, like downtown Nashville, to go with our invitations and the whole theme of our wedding. Okay, now let's talk about clothing for an engagement shoot. I really stressed off with this, <laughs> because I feel like so many things with weddings, 
like there's so much pressure on these little things and really you just have to let go of that pressure yes it's a really important thing you got to do everything that you can do to look glamorous and like have everything perfect but then you just got to let it go because in the end of the day yes it's really important and you're gonna be looking at them in 10 years but it is just a picture and it is about the love <laughs> So, I wore for my engagement shoot four different looks, and I actually brought those for you to see. Hang on. Okay, so the first look that we wore, yes, I'm like go neutral and natural and stuff like that, but then I'm like, look, I'm in a bride robe right now. <laughs> um, so, the first look we did, I wanted to do like downtown street feel Nashville. So, I wore dark denim, and then I wore this gold. This is a new Euro jacket. This one's a little bit pricier. Um, I'm sure you could find like a hero piece like this. That's what I call this, a hero piece. I wanted something that was just so glam, like so something that was just like pop and really fun. So we walked to the streets in Nashville and it was so cute. And then Kyle wore dark denim and just a plain white button down, which I think is great for guys. Okay, that was my first look. Okay, so my next look was this Monroe, very plain black turtleneck dress. So this is a knit dress. It's very form-fitting, so make sure you get your spanks or whatever kind of undergarments you gotta wear to make your belly look flat. <laughs> so this is just kind of a mock turtleneck. It doesn't go like all the way up and blouse over. So it was really flattering and it was very form-fitting and Audrey Hepburn wore a dress like this and in 50 years somebody's gonna be wearing a dress like this. So this dress is not gonna go out of style. And this was like $150 and it's recent. I'm gonna link all these things below. And next, this is the dress that you guys were like freaking out about. So I wanted a long, beautiful dress, and I'm gonna talk about colors in a minute, but this is a new Nicole Miller Artillier dress, and it is just beautiful. So it doesn't go all the way to the floor on me. It goes almost to the floor, which was perfect for me. And also, this dress has a lot of movement. So I knew I wanted to do some pictures where I was like throwing it up like this, and kind of dancing around, and doing some running pictures and stuff like that. So this dress was beautiful for that. Also, the neckline was really nice. And this tone, like gold is always gonna be in. Like gold is gold. <laughs> and then last but not least, I wore this beautiful Zimmerman dress. Now Zimmerman's a little bit of a higher price point as well, but I wanted to kind of go out and splurge, you know, but any kind of white dress would be beautiful. I didn't want to do something like really form fitted and white. I want to do something flowy and blousey. So I belted it like this. And it was really beautiful because it kind of looked like lace, but it wasn't like really fancy formal lace, like I'm gonna be wearing, you know, wedding-ish times. So I think this was really, really beautiful. And then Kyle wore his, this is it in the back. It's got kind of two layers like that. And then I just wore plain nude stilettos and it was just really, really, really beautiful. I'm gonna link all these dresses below. So those were my looks that I wore. And as you guys can see, I stuck with three colors. So I think for an engagement shoot, you have to have a killer white dress. That was my white dress, the last look that I did. You have to have like a very classic piece. So I really love the turtleneck because it's very clean, it's elongating. Depending on like how you are with your arms, I haven't started really losing weight for my wedding, so I was a little bit like conscious about, oh, I'm gonna look 10,000 pounds. But it really was really slimming, and depending on how you pose and stuff like that, like you can really make something like that look good. I love like a silver or a gold too. I love a hero piece. That's what I keep calling it, a hero piece. So I wore those two gold pieces. You could also do like a killer red dress or like some kind of beautiful, whatever your color is. In my opinion, I think do a solid. I don't think you should do like a floral print or a you know polka dot or stripe or something like that because who knows if you're gonna end up liking that for years to come. And also, I love like a solid piece like that for the back of a save the date if you're using it for something like that whatever it is. Also like for the guys, I think it's cool to throw in like a plaid shirt, like a nice flannel or something like that, or even like a denim shirt. Kyle probably would have done something like that, but we wanted a little bit more like Nashville glam, like a chic look. And we shot all our engagement photos in one hour, four looks. So we were kind of like hurrying through. Also, it's really important for you guys to be comfortable. I know a lot of people aren't doing two photo shoots a week like I have to do these days. And so you're not used to movement and you're not used to what is your best look on a camera and you're not used to even like what kind of smile works for a camera i can't tell you how many people i've talked to that are like i don't even use my engagement pictures because my fiance looks so awkward or because i was so uncomfortable in front of the camera like really think about that kind of stuff and work on that and then also i say when you get in front of that camera that day just own it pretend like nobody else is around there 
Don't be like all tense and stiff. Just like be in the moment with your partner. Do natural movement. I like a lot of movement. I don't like the really posed stuff as you can see. So I hope y'all just love that little video on engagement shooting. I'm just all giddy and excited after having a great engagement shoot. So I want to share some of my tips and tricks because I put a lot of thought into it. Of course, the most important thing with an engagement shoot is to let your love shine through, have a good time, and like look like yourself, of course. So if you guys love this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. I hope you guys are enjoying my wedding series. Look for those engagement shoot pictures coming soon. And thanks so much for watching.